Chapter 8, Lecture 3 out of 3. Learning outcomes at the end of the lesson, students should be able to find the conditional probability and independent event. What is conditional event? Conditional probability is the probability that an event will occur given that another event has already occurred. If A and B are two events, then the conditional probability of A given B is written as probability of A given B. Means that this B has already happened. Then we want to find probability of A when B has happened. Probability of A given B where this A is the event whose probability is to be determined. So actually, we want to find probability of A. But that is a condition where the event B has already occurred. So the formula for conditional probability is for probability of A given B, it is equal to probability of A intersect with B divided with probability of event B. So this probability of B cannot be zero. And if the probability of uh, event B given that A has happened is equal to probability of A intersect with B but divide with probability of A where probability of A must not equal to 0. Probability of A given B is read the probability of A given B. Example 1. Given that probability of A equal to 1 over 3, Probability of B equal to 1 over 4. Probability of A union B equal to 1 over 2. Find probability of A given B. Probability of B given A. Probability of A intersect with B prime. Probability of A given B prime. Now, to find probability of A given B, the formula should be probability of A intersect with B. Probability of A intersect with B divided with the condition which is probability of B. But from the information we have, we only have probability of A, probability of B and probability of union of A and B. So how can we find the probability of intersect? So what we can do? First, to find the intersection between A and B, the probability by using the union formula. So, what is the union formula? So, the union formula is equal to probability of A union with B equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersect with B. So, we have probability of the union and individually. So, what we can do, rearrange everything so that probability of A intersect with B will be the subject. Now, to find the probability of A intersect with B, we just substitute probability of A which is equal to 1 over 3. Probability of B equal to 1 over 4 and probability of A union with B equal to 1 over 2. So, we have probability of A intersect with B equal to 1 over 12. So, the intersection area for A and B is equal to 1 over 12 in the Venn diagram. Now, for question A, we want to find probability of A given B. So, we just have to replace the intersection probability and the probability of B. So, probability of A intersect with B equal to 1 over 12 divided with probability of B which is 1 over 4. Okay, so we have the result equal to 1 over 3. Okay, from the information we found, we can complete our Venn diagram. Why? Because the area in the uh, circle A without the intersection part is equal to what? Equal to 1 over 3 minus the intersection part. So that's why we have 1 over 4. The same as for the circle B. So we have probability of B minus the intersection to get the crescent part. So... 1 over 4 minus the 1 over 12. So, we get 1 over 6. Okay. The outside of the circles, outside of the circles A and B, because the total sample space equal to 1, so we can subtract everything inside the circle A and B from 1. That's why we have 1 over 2 outside of the circle. 
The next question is to find the probability of B given A. Right? Yes. So, we need to find what is the intersection B given A divided with probability of A. So, probability of B intersect with A is the same as probability of A intersect with B, which is equal to 1 over 12. And probability of A is equal to 1 over 3. So, the result will be 1 over 4. The next question is to find the probability of A intersect with not B. So, what we need to do, it will be the circle A. And then because we want A only and not B, so we have to subtract the, the intersect area. That's why it will be probability of A minus probability of A intersect with B. So, we will get the crescent part of the A. So, what is probability of A? It is equal to 1 over 3. Probability of intersect equal to 1 over 12. So, the answer will be 1 over 4. For question D, they want you to find probability of A, A given B prime. So, probability of A given B prime means that we use the formula which is equal to probability of A intersect with B prime divided, divided with probability of B prime. So, probability of A intersect with B prime, we found it in the question C which is equal to 1 over 4. And probability of not B or B prime is equal to what? Yes, it is equal to 1 minus probability of B. So, what is probability of B? Probability of B is equal to 1 over 3, 1 over 4. So, 1 minus 1 over 4 will be 3 over 4. So, the answer for this question is equal to 1 over 3. Okay. Example 2. In a college, 12% of the students are left-handed, 15% of the students wear glasses, and 3% are both left-handed and wear glasses. So now we have the probability in percent. So if we change this percentage into the decimal point, we have 0 0.12, 0 0.15, and 0 0.03. Given that a student wear glasses, find the probability that the student is left-handed. So which one is the condition? Which one has happened first? So here from the words here, because given after the given, it's, it's a statement of student wear glasses. So this wear glasses is the condition. So we want to find the probability student left-handed. So let's say we let L as the left-handed student and G as student wear glasses. So... Probability of L is equal to 0 0.12. Probability of G is equal to 0 0.15. And both left-handed and wear glasses is the intersection between L and G which is equal to 0 0.03. Now we want to find the probability of L given G. Okay, because the, D, the G is key, uh, has happened first. So probability of L given G is equal to probability of L intersect with G divided with probability of G. So, what is the intersection between L and G? It is equal to 0 0.03. Probability of G is equal to 0 0.15. So, we get the result as 0 0.2. And for question B, what is said in B? What is the probability that the student wear glasses if he is left-handed? So, this if is the condition. So, the condition is left-handed. So, what we want to find is probability of G. So, it is equal to probability of G given L. So, probability of G given L is equal to probability of G intersect with L divided with probability of L. So, probability of G intersect with L is the same as probability of L intersect with G which is equal to 0 0.03. And probability of L is equal to 0 0.12. So, the answer equal to 0 0.25. Independent events. Okay, two events are said to be independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of another event occurring. An example of two independent events is as follows. Say you roll a die and flip a coin. Does the die and coin related, will, the, will it affect the result or uh, the outcome of the rolling a die and flip a coin together? Okay. If event A and B are independent, the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other, then probability of A given B should be probability of A lah. 
So we don't have to think about the B. The same as probability of B given A has happened. So it will be the probability of B only. So for the from the conditional probability conditional event probability of A given B equal to probability of A intersect with B divided with probability of B. So because probability of A given B is equal to directly equal to probability of A. So, what we can say about the intersection between A and B? So, probability of A intersect with B is equal to probability of B just multiply with the probability of A. This is if even A and even B are independent. It's not applicable to any for every cases. No. We have to make sure that it is stated that A and B are independent. Or we can show probability of A intersect with B from the Venn diagram or from the data is the same as probability of B multiply with from probability of A. Okay. This type of formula we can use to show or we can use it if there is stated that A, even A and B are independent. Example 3. A, B and C are three events such that A and B are independent. Whereas A and C are mutually exclusive. Okay. Now they say that A and B independent. A and C mutually exclusive. Remember what is independent? Remember what is mutually exclusive. Okay. Given probability of A equal to 0 0.4. Probability of B equal to 0 0.2. Probability of C equal to 0 0.3. And probability of B intersect with C equal to 0 0.1. Find probability of A union with B. Now, they say that A and B are independent. So, what we can say about A and B? Okay. So, this is our Venn diagram. How do I get this Venn diagram? It said that A and B are independent. So, it can be intersect. But, the thing is, A and C are mutually exclusive. What it means by mutually exclusive? They will not intersect with each other. Okay, what do we know? We know that probability of A equal to 0 0.4. But do we know what is the probability of A intersect with B? We know if we remember the formula of probability of independent. What is independent? Yes, probability of A intersect with B is equal to probability of A multiply with probability of B if they are independent. So if we try to multiply probability of A and probability of B, we get 0 0.4 multiply with 0 0.2 will be 0 0.08. So that will be the intersection between A and B. And then it is also said that probability of B intersect with C equal to 0 0.1. So we have these two area. Now we can find the remaining area which is for the A probability of A intersect with not B equal to 0 0.4 minus 0 0.08. That's why we get 0 0.32. And for C, C only, so it will be what? Probability of C equal to 0 0.3. So subtract the intersection of C with B is equal to 0 0.1. So we get 0 0.2 in this area. So the remaining area for B only is equal to what? So the total probability of B is equal to 0 0.2. So, minus the 0 0.08 and 0 0.1. So, we have the remaining 0 0.02. Okay. So, that's it from the information we have. Now, we want to find probability of A union with B. So, what we need to do if we have the Venn diagram, you can directly just adding up these four area. So, 0 0.32 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.1. Okay. But there is another way to find probability of A union B. So we can find the intersection first. Which probability of the intersection between A and B is just multiply between with probability of A and B. So we get 0 0.08. And probability of A is equal to what? Probability of A equal to 0 0.4. Probability of B equal to 0 0.2. And minus the intersect which is 0 0.08 we get 0 0.52. Is this the same answer when we use the Venn diagram? Is it 0 0.52 if we use the Venn diagram? So let's us calculate. So we have 0 0.32 adding up with 0 0.08, we get 0 0.4. Adding up with 0 0.1, we get 
0 0.5 and add it up with 0 0.02 we get 0 0.52 so we have the same answer okay so that's for question a for question b find the probability of c given a prime so what we need to use is that we know the formula for the conditional is equal to probability of C intersect with A prime given probability of A prime. So what is C probability C intersect with A prime? So we can find by using the yeah the Crescent formula. What is the Crescent formula? It should be probability of C minus probability of a intersect with C or C intersect with A. So we have to subtract the intersection between these two area. Okay. So what it will be? So we know what is probability of C. But do we know what is probability of C intersect with A? We don't know. But it is said that probability uh, uh, even A and C are mutually exclusive. So if it's mutually exclusive, it will be what? It will be zero. Okay, that's why it's probability of C 0 0.3 minus 0. And probability of A prime, which is the complement of A equal to 1 minus probability of A, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.4. So we have the answer equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.6 equal to 0 0.5. Example 4. There are 60 students in the sixth form of a certain school. Mathematics is studied by 27 of them, biology by 20, and 22 students study neither mathematics nor biology. So, they didn't study both of the subject. So, it should be outside of the circle, both circles. Find the probability that a random, randomly selected student studies both mathematics and biology. Okay, it's easier for us to sketch the Venn diagram. So, how our how was our Venn diagram? Search first. We should have two circle. Why? Because it's for mathematics and biology. So because the the student that studied mathematics is twenty seven. So the total, uh, the the twenty seven is actually including the crescent with the intersect part. So let's say we assume the intersect part is unknown, which is equal to x. So for the crescent of m, it's only 27 minus x. Why crescent? Because this is the error that we don't that didn't take the biology. That taking mathematics but not biology. It's only mathematics. Okay? The given here is 27 is the studied mathematics. It may be mathematics only or mathematics and biology. Okay, how about the biology? So we just subtract x from the 20. So we have 20 minus x and then outside of the circle it will be 22. So the total should be, total of this area, it should be 60. So what we should do, we just add up every values in every areas and equate to 60 to find the value of x. So it will be 27 minus x plus with x plus with 20 minus x plus 22 equal to 60. So let x as the subject, we have what? We have x equal to 9. Okay, so if x equal to 9, then probability of m intersect with b or probability of the student taking both mathematics and biology is equal to 9 over total student which is equal to 60. So the probability is equal to 3 over 20. So now we have 9 here. Here it will be 27 minus 9 which is equal to yes, 18. And then here 20 minus 9 it will be 11. Okay, next question. What is the next question? Next question. Determine whether the event studying mathematics is statistically independent of the event studying biology. So how to check whether it is independent or not? So we can use the formula of the intersection for the independent event. What is the formula? Probability of a intersect with B should be equal to probability of A multiply with probability of B if A and B are independent. So we know M and B, the intersection is equal to what? Equal to 9, right? So 9 over 60 is the probability. So how about the multiplication between probability of A and B? 
Okay. So, what we need to do, we have to show whether it is true that probability of M intersect with B equal to probability of M multiplied with probability of B. So, what is probability of M? It is equal to 27 over 60 because the student that study mathematics is 27 student and probability of biology is equal to 20 over 60. So, probability of M multiplied with probability of B is equal to 27 over 60 multiplied with 20 over 60 which is equal to 3 over 20. Surprisingly, it is equal to the probability of M intersect with B. So, what we can say from this form, this finding, yes, we can say that probability, uh, that the event M and event B are independent. Because we can show that probability of M intersect with B equal to probability of B multiplied with probability of M. Okay? Example 5. 500% which is male and female were asked if they are in favor of or against capital punishment. Of the 300 males, 125 are in favor, whereas 145 females are against. If a person is selected at random from this 500 person, find the following probability. In favor, given female. In favor, all female. And then, are the events male and in favor, in favor, independent? Are they mutually exclusive? Give explanation. So now, we have two categories. It's a gender and the second one is the whether they are in favor of or against capital punishment so the easiest way to do this question is to to do the contingency table so if we have 300 males means that we have 200 female out of 300 males one to five are in favor means that the remaining is how many 175 are against males that against against and male and then out of 200 145 are against means that 55 are in favor okay so this is for female and in favor so let's do the contingency table so we should have this lah so for in favor male is 125 so we have this information and we know the total male are 300 so the remaining from 300 it should be 175 are against and male and then we know the remaining from 500 is 200 female so from 200 they said that 145 are against so we can find what is the female that in favor of the capital punishment Okay, and then now we can find what is the total for the in favor and against, which is 180 and 320 respectively. Now we want to find probability of what? R given F. What is R? R is in favor and F. Probability of the in favor given, it is a female. So what is the formula? It should be probability of r intersect with f divided with probability of f so probability of r intersect with f where is probability on r in in favor and female so it will be 55 so 55 out of 500 divided with probability of female how many female 200 divided by 500 so the answer equal to 11 over 40. The next question is probability of A union with F. What is A? It's not A. It should be in favor R. Okay. So, there is typo here. Okay. So, it should be probability of R lah. Probability that the person is in favor of female. So, it should be probability of R plus with probability of F minus probability of R intersect with F. So, what is probability of R in favor is 180 divided by 500 and plus with probability of female which is 200 divided by 500 minus the intersect which, with the in favor and female which is 55 over 200. Intersect in favor and female 
So this one should be 500 lah kan hmm, 500 lah So what do we get here It will be 385 plus width so let us calculate first is it true okay because there is typo okay so this one should be 500 huh? this one may it's, it's true that it is 55 over 500 it should be divided with the total overall so what we get is 180 plus 200 minus 55 is equal to 325 divided with 500 so to simplify it we get 13 over 20 okay so this is for question b and then the next part the question asks you to find the to show that whether to show that whether probably, uh, uh, the event male and in favor are independently. So, what independent? We can show that the intersect is equal to multiply each of the probability of the event independently. Uh, 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 multiply je lah. So, probability of, we need to show that probability of the male intersect with in favor is equal to probability of the male multiplied with probability of the in favor. So, let's say we do here. We know that from the uh, from the contingency table, probability of male intersect with the in favor is equal to 1 to 5 over 500, which is 1 over 4. And then what is probability of M? It is equal to 300 over 500, which is equal to 3 over 5. What is probability of R in favor? It is equal to 180 divided by 500, which is equal to 9 over 25. Now multiply the probability of M and probability of in favor. So we get 3 over 5 multiplied with 9 over 25, which is equal to 27 over 125. Is it the same as the... Uh, as the data given in the contingency table no because from the table we get 1 over 4 so it is not the same as probability of m intersect with a from the table so what we can say that the the male and the in favor are not independent and then the next one are they mutually exclusive no totally not why because for mutually exclusive the in the, the intersection should be zero but we have probability of M intersect with the R, which is the in favor, is not equal to 0, which is equal to 1 over 4. So what we can say, we can say that the event M and A are not mutually exclusive. Okay. Conditional probability and tree diagram. Okay, so another method to uh, represent the data is by using the tree diagram. A tree diagram is a very useful way to compute the conditional probability. For example, so we have event A. So we get A or A prime. And then the next step from A, we get event B. So this one here is the probability of B given A has happened. Okay. And then we have the probability of A and we have the probability of B given A has happened. To find the intersection between A and B, we just have to multiply along the branches. Okay. Note, to find the probability, you multiply along the branches and add between the branches. So, you can add up between branches to find the total probability. Okay, example 2. There are 12 red balls and 8 green balls in a bucket. Two balls are taken out in sequence without replacement. By using three diagram, find the probability. So this one, you have to do like experiment. So we have a total 12 red balls and 8 green balls. So 12 red, 8 green. So let's say for the first ball, we can either take out red or green. So it depends. Lah. So if we want to take red, what is the probability to take out the red balls? Because we have 12 red balls out of 20. So the probability to get red ball on the first, first, uh, first sequence is 12 over 20. To get green, it's equal to 8 out of 20. Now, the next stage is to take the another ball. So what's left for the red ball? Our red ball left with 11. 
because we take one from the first part and then the green ball still remain as eight but if we take out the green our red ball still have 12 but our green ball we left with seven so for the second sequence so we can also take out red or green so if we take out the red so what is how many red left so we only have 11 red 11 out of the total balls inside the bucket is 19 so that's that is the probability is equal to 11 over 19 how about green so we have 8 green so take out 8 out of 11 at uh, 19 the total balls inside the bucket is 19 okay the next one if we take the first is green then the second ball is red or green so what is the probability okay so if we take uh, green outside so what's left if the second one is red so we have still have 12 red so 12 out of 19 and then for the green because we take out the green already so we left with 7 green so it will be 7 out of 19 okay the question asks you by using the tree diagram find the probability that the first ball is red so directly from the table we can from the tree diagram we get probability the first is red okay okay the next question is the second one is red if the first is red so this is the event lah. the first is red the second is red if the first is red so directly you get this probability 11 over 19 this is probability what of red 2 given the first also red okay so this is the conditional right conditional uh, this branch is the conditional probability because red has happened and for question c the second one is red if the first is green the second one is red okay this is the second one is red given the first is green so directly it is equal to 12 over 19 because this is the probability of red given given green has happened okay red 2 where green is 1 and then the second one is red so where is the second one is red so where is the event where is the event where the second one is red so we have this has the second one red and also this one okay so to to, to get this one means that we have this one probability of r the first one is red intersect with r2 the second one also red so for this one is green the first one is green intersect with the second one is red both are second one is red so to get the probability of this intersection we need to multiply along the branch okay so how to find for d okay so for d so it will be probability of r1 intersect with r2 plus with g1 intersect with r2 so what is the probability of getting the first right so it will be 12 over 20 not 10 but 20 and then multiply to get red on the second branch is 11 over 19 uh, the first red and the second also red okay this is 12 over 20 11 over 19 and then for the second one the first is green what is the green 8 over 20 right and the second ball is red which is equal to 12 over 19 so we multiply along the branch and then we add up these two cases so we get 3 over 5 okay so for question e for question e is probability that the second one is uh, the first one is red given that the second one is red so now it is probability of r1 given r2 the one that we have in a branch is the r2 given r1 so for this one we need to use the formula so what is the formula it is it will be probability of r1 intersect with r2 divided probability of r2 so what is probability of r1 intersect with r2 we can multiply along the branch so r1 red 1 the second the second one also red so this one is uh, berapa? Uh, 12 over 20 and 11 over 19 okay 11 over 19 and then that is the intersection 
And then what is probability of R2? This one we get it in question D. So it is equal to 3 over 5. This is from question D. Okay, so just multiply and divide this value. So we get probability of R1 given R2 is equal to 11 over 19. Okay, so it is a bit tricky but you need to understand by using the tree diagram. It's actually given the conditional probability already. So to get the intersection between the event, you just have to multiply along the branches. Okay, and for the total probability, you can just add up between the branches. Okay. So that's all for the chapter uh, 8 for the probability. Okay, thank you.